The hands up does make good sense on this point. Yes, again, he's he's chancing Ripper's life, like so close there, so close to getting that pick. He does know exactly when to split from his team. He's almost always splitting from his team when he has opportunities to. That's the key. He's always splitting from his team when he has the opportunities. The only times we've seen him group with the team is when he has the high noon. They're trying to utilize the high noon because obviously he needs that support when he's when he's trying to go for the high noon. But here, look at this. Like he has a. What are they going to play? I hope he's playing Sombra. I really do hope he's playing Sombra. I want to see Happy Sombra. I don't think he's going to play it. Yeah, he's playing McCree. Let's see how he plays McCree then. Is he going to play flank McCree? Looks like he is. Making quite a lot of sound here. Okay, yeah, he's playing flank McCree. Recognizes that the enemy has Sig. It, you know, what he what he is looking for here, if the enemy sees the enemy has Sig, he knows that he doesn't have to worry about a diva inting onto his face. He can just kind of make these aggressive off angles. Uh, Morph can deny him with a shield. See the off angle he's taking here? He's just playing like a soft off angle, making sure that if they push forward, he's able to deny this off angle. He is, you can see that he's kind of He's hungry to make this off angle flank. Now what the question is, what is he looking for from this off angle? Well, he's looking for an angle onto the enemy bat. There we go. He hits one headshot. The second shot just barely missing there. Ripper jumps right away from the flashbang. Yeah, I don't I don't see them surviving this now. He just doesn't miss, does he? Oof, he rolls straight into a fire strike. So, the McCree's job in this comp is quite simple. It's really quite simple. Um, but to do it, to do it effectively, it, it's simple to understand, but hard to master because there's a lot of things that come into it. Um, when you're flanking, you have to you have to be able to read the tempo of the fight and and look at the timings for when you can flank, which is not an easy task. So far, uh, Happy's done a really good job of like finding these off angles and making these flanks. The basic concept is when you're playing the McCree in this comp, if you just play frontline McCree and try and shoot the enemy Ryan, you're not getting any value. Why use window there? I mean, he used window before everyone died. He's using window now just to try and clutch this, but yeah, it's too. Th it's like a clutch window, and to be honest with you, window is. Window is, is really, really easy to farm. Yeah, this guy's aim is just cracked. It's kind of unfortunate he rolls into a fire strike, but you know, his aim, his aim is definitely cracked. Ruby got the pickup. Let's have the high noon. I wonder if we're going to see some, some jump pad shenanigans. Probably not, to be honest with you. So I'll, I'll try and break down with you this next flank. Okay, so let's see that. He's looking at his team. He's trying to figure out where his team is going from. Okay. So he's not making a flank this round. He's actually just going for an aggressive single uh, high noon play. He gets lifted. Drone comes down. That was a nice play from uh, Spitfire. We got to see that. I know this is a happy review, but we have to see that play. So let's watch this from like... Let's watch this from... Let's kind of break this this fight down in terms of like the push and pull from each team. So Outlaws are going forward. They go with High Noon. They go with Outlaws go with Speed Boost. They're speeding around. They're trying to look for any opportunity here, any window they can get value from the High Noon. Spitfire understand that they're using High Noon and that they have the advantage right now. Right? Spitfire understand that Outlaws are have the tempo they have the advantage here they're the ones that are pushing forward so spitfire just need to kind of survive this and then they're going to have their turn to kind of push back high noon goes down from happy they wall 
The tempo is gone from Outlaws now. You see that? The tempo is dissipated. Now it's Spitfire's turn to try and push this and be aggressive. Morph goes to the lift, gets some good damage, forces the drone there, drops over the top. And then we got Hadi from the flank. He gets a six man shatter. How did Beat come out there from Juby? Wasn't he shattered? Oh, he avoids shatter. He avoids shatter. Oh my god, it's actually insane how they pulled that back. Like, just that one play. This fight was such a back and forth. That beat was so clutch. And let's let's go back to Happy here and see what Happy was doing this whole time. Because, I, I, honestly, Juby was the MVP this fight. Absolutely clutch beat there from, from Juby. Juby is just barely wall riding there. Just barely wall riding and barely avoids this shatter. Which is the difference between them winning and losing this fight. Mayo comes out from KSF. Nice defensive Mayo. Stops the follow up. Happy rolls back. Wow, that was that was a really, really nice um comeback there from Outlaws. And you kind of see you kind of see the push and pull there, like between tempo. Outlaws started off the tempo strong, they were pushing forward with the high noon. Spitfire reacted very well. They used the Sigil and they used the, the Shatter. Outlaws then reacted insanely well to that. Juby had a clutch beat. And KSF had a defensive mail. And Outlaws are rewarded there with the fight win. Meanwhile, controlling all the point the whole time. Iron comes out from from, Outlo from uh, Spitfire. Hybrid gets the kill onto Crimson. That's pretty bad. But Happy making a really nice flank there. He did have a good opportunity to get a pick onto, onto Hybrid, but he did miss the opportunity. You see here, he's, he's only going for those headshots. Using the cover quite closely. He plays the off angle twice, and now he's backing off. It's just looking for anything he can get here, but he realizes the fight's done, and he's going to back off. He might get pushed. He's going to hide, isn't he? So he realizes he's not going to get away from this. Very aggressive play there with the high noon. So they go. He jumps around with the high noon. Jumps. Very aggressive. Gets flashbanged. Rolls out of the out of the mail and out of the uh, the danger. Using roll there to get away and using flashbang and roll defensively to get away. Blazer gets caught out overextending there. really pushing this off angle to the limits there and again you see this off angle what's the what's the strength of this off angle well ripper has to worry about healing these guys from the front and he has to worry about this mccree off angle flank happy making this off angle flank look very fluid and again he had another great opportunity there to get a pick on ripper honestly happy doing exactly what he needs to do so far on the mccree and the, obviously the aim the aim is there to back it up Wow, they just they uh, C9 the point. And even if they did touch the point, I'm very confident that Happy's going to get these kills. Yeah, he's really dominating with those angles. Are we going to see more McCree from Happy? Let's see some Hanzo. Why Hanzo on this point? Maybe just because the Hanzo can utilize those platforms. These, well, not these platforms, but these kind of walls here. He can use those, utilize these walls really nicely. I suppose he can also take position up here really nicely as well. The Hanzo does make good sense on this point. Yeah, 
yes again he's he's chancing ripper's life like so close there so close to getting that pick he does know exactly when to split from his team he's almost always splitting from his team when he has opportunities to that's the key he's always splitting from his team when he has the opportunities the only times we've seen him group with the team is when he has the high noon they're trying to utilize the high noon because obviously he needs that support when he's when he's trying to go for the high noon but here look at this like he has a, a very good opportunity here to get a pick on ripper and ripper just barely survives he doesn't survive actually he gets taken out yeah he's putting an, an incredible amount of pressure on on spitfire there and he's basically saying spitfire if you play slow i'm eventually going to get a pick if you go quick i'm still going to get a pick So uh, Happy's really like kind of he's had free reign this whole game with controlling those off angles. It makes you wonder if they if if Spitfire need to be sending at least one person to try and control those off angles. Again, you see this angle. All it takes here is one pick. And and how can... You know, this is kind of risk-free. Who can push him here? I mean, Lucio can push him, but you know, I don't want to be a Lucio pushing a Hanzo, to be honest. Uh, no one else can push. So he's just completely free on this position. Does get, does get a Sim Orb to the face, so he's coming back here for some heals. Gets the heals, and now we're going to see him be more aggressive again. Throws the Sonic out just to get information on where the enemy supports are. He knows the enemy Bapu is, is here in main. Oh, again, Ripper gets so close to dying. That's... Oh my god, that's just so huge. It's just not... It doesn't feel fair, does it? He's using like something that's quite subtle, but he's using the Sonics really nicely as well, just to gather information. Again, it's off angle, it's putting so much pressure. Spitfire have sw switched over to a D.Va now. And there's the D.Va. Nice, okay, that's exactly what they needed to do. They need to clear this D.Va. They need to clear Happy away so that he can't have free reign. And there we saw Molf really nice identifying that and taking out Happy. He's on the Doomfist now. Is he really going to play Doomfist? I guess the Doomfist makes a lot of sense versus this comp. Um, you, when you think of Sim, Sim, you know, the, the comp of Spitfire, they're very clumped together here. So the Doomfist does make a lot of sense versus this. Just because he's, he's going to have more targets here for the punch. Goes in. Just punching in. Uses his... Using his uh, uppercut E to get away. Nice. nice. Also nice. Like The, the way you play this comp from, from Outlaws is you have to be aggressive with your Doom. To... You have to be aggressive with your Doom, otherwise the Doom is not going to get value. He's just going to get forced out. So I like the aggression here from Outlaws to like support this Doomfist. He goes for the punch. And this is exactly what Doomfist wants, right? Like he wants his team to be creating a lot of space for him so he can make these 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 aggressive plays. Nice flank. He finds Ripper. Goes for the punch. May use his ice block. Decides to get out. He's done his job. He's probably going to do the same, same play here. Yep. It just doesn't... Doesn't feel fair, does it? Can anyone really touch? No one can touch. I feel like, yeah, I mean, he's getting a lot of value, but London were not putting anywhere near as enough uh, putting anywhere near enough priority on these off angles and you know he's just getting so much value because of that he's getting insane value there because of these uh and we saw it we saw it towards the end 
The one time that Moth is contesting the off angle, Happy doesn't get anything done the whole fight. But you know, he swaps, he, he makes the intelligent swap and swaps onto Doomfist there. So again, I'm sure, you know, I'm parroting what everyone is saying, but we, we kind of saw here that Happy is the real deal. He kind of is the real deal. Um, I'm interested to see how he performs again versus some other good teams. We saw him perform very well versus Shock. I'd like to see some other tough matchups for, for the Outlaws. Outlaws are definitely a team to watch this season. Um, they're a super interesting team.